guys so now that we've went over the basics of lambda expressions we're gonna jump right into event handling and we are gonna be using lambdas in this video so if you guys haven't seen my tutorial for lambda expressions the link will be in the description I recommend going back and watching that um, also one thing I want to address quickly before we go into event handling is that I made just some small changes. First of all, I took out some of the example code we had from episode two, and also here, I took this VBox, which has our two nodes in it, the button and the label, and I wrapped it inside of a group. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but now I have the this group G as the root parent for the scene, and if that terminology doesn't make sense, that stuff is explained in episode two, so link for that will also be in the description. But anyway, the reason I did it this way is because it's generally good practice to have a parent at the top of your hierarchy which doesn't really have any nodes in it and just has the other parents in it and if that sounds confusing you can pretty much disregard it and just keep this box as your root group you don't have to worry about it um, but anyway let's jump into event handling here so I've put together this small little paint diagram and so if you look at any of Oracle's presentations or their documentation or whatever, I, I think they define an event as anything relevant to the system or anything important that the system needs to note or something like that. But in simple terms, an event is just anything that happens whenever you either interact with the scene or uh, the stage or whatever you want to call this area or you see anything really graphically going on. And what I mean by that is it goes down to a very simple level so if I maximize the window like that something graphically went on the window changed in size that's what's called a window event if I minimize it that's another window event if I drag my mouse around this it's an input event because I'm giving the window data by doing something inside of it and then lastly if I press this button that's an action event so I actually made this little paint diagram explaining this sort of basic hierarchy so you have this super class called event and then you have subclasses of event called action events, input events, and window events. There are also other types, I think, but these are the main ones you're going to be interacting with. Today we're going to be mainly going over action events because those are what you use to handle um, uh, button clicks and stuff like that. But um, it's actually surprisingly similar in the way that you go about handling different types of events. So this will be useful when you're going into input events and window events and stuff also from here there are different like sub action events and sub input events I'm not gonna worry about explaining that sort of stuff right now um, we're just gonna think of it as this smaller hierarchy and we'll maybe cover more of the in-depth stuff in a later episode but for now let's look at it how it works in the code so we're gonna start with this method called set on action. So set on action is a method that you can call on a button and you can call it on several different types of nodes but I know for sure a button is one of them and we can see here it takes in as a parameter an instance of event handler. So for those of you that don't know which is probably all of you if you haven't done GUIs before an event handler is an interface that has one method and this is why we're going to be able to use lambda expressions because if you guys remember we can use lambda expressions when there's only one method in an interface so I hope this doesn't confuse you but I'm going to show you guys what that method definition actually looks like so in the event handler interface there is one method and I'm pretty sure it looks if not exactly like this something very close to this and it takes in an event e and that's what it looks like so like I said remember event is the super class of all of these different types of events so if we go ahead and we give it an action event here or we give it a window event that's all fine because those are all types of events so how we're gonna do it is we're gonna use lambda expressions to make an instance of the event handler interface so we're gonna say here we're gonna call our event I'm used to calling it E some people call it event it really doesn't matter what you call it then we're going to do this symbol. Now remember, with the lambda expressions, your parameters have to match up. So here, we it doesn't. These don't have to be the same actual name, but we need to give it one parameter since the method takes in one parameter, and then we need to implement it here after the symbol. So let's for now 
we're going to do something really simple. We're just going to say system.out.printline handling events. Okay. So now we finished that statement. We'll get rid of this because this was just to show you guys how it's defined. And if we now run our program and then we press on this button, we can see it says handling events. Every time we press this, it says handling events. So the reason, now I told you guys that there are a bunch of different types of events. Now you can see here that for this b.setOnAction method, we gave it a way to handle events, but we didn't tell it what kind of event it's handling. Now this is important to note because this b.setOnAction method is actually, in theory, just a shorthand way to call the b.addEventHandler method. I personally like to use the add event handler method because I think it's more explicit. It makes it easier to understand exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to show you guys now how to do it this way. Um, if you want to do it the shorthand, you could keep it like this. This automatically assumes, this method assumes that you're going to be writing an event handler for an action event. But when we use the add event handler method, we can see that it takes first the event type. <coughs> and then the event handler. So we're actually going to copy and paste this part um, over here because this b.setOnAction method took an event handler so we can just give it the same event handler here if we wanted to do the same thing. But now watch, so if we say um, here, if we say like mouse event <coughs> then we're going to run into issues because we're not trying to handle mouse events, we're trying to handle action events. So what we're going to do is, and if this doesn't make sense, don't stress on it too much, but we're going to say action event and then we're going to say dot action. So when we take an event type, oh and then here we're going to import um, the action event from JavaFX. So when we make an action event, that's what happens when we actually go here and click. When we click on something, that is an example of an action event. This action event dot action part, you don't have to worry about this second part too much. The, the point is that this first parameter is a type. So the actual type of the action event we're using is an action type. Again, don't stress on that. That's what I was talking about when I said that we have lots of different subclasses here so we can do different types of action events but again we're just gonna keep it on on the action type so yeah try not to stress out on that too much but anyway I know this tutorial has been kind of short I'm gonna show you guys actually one more thing before we end and actually here I'll show you guys two more things so first of all I'll show you normally you're not gonna be putting print line statements when you actually handle events normally what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be making stuff happen in your window so I'm gonna give you guys a, a super quick example here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say scene dot set fill and we're gonna say color dot blue and now I know this is going to look a little weird, and I'll explain exactly what that does in a second. But if we now run this, and we press on our button, now our scene turned blue. So this is that's more the kind of stuff that you're going to be actually doing when you create a button. Uh, so, for example, I actually just, um, for, for an assignment I was doing, I created a window which had a button that said run match, and it would run two basketball teams against each other and when you actually press the run match button it would give you a table showing the results of what happened in the match so that's sort of the kind of stuff you're going to be doing with event handlers now uh... the last thing i wanted to show you guys which i can't guarantee this will be useful but it is very interesting and i'm not going to go over the whole thing because it's actually pretty complicated but I'm going to show you guys real quick. If we say scene.addEventHandler, now just like we added an event handler to the button, we can add an event handler to the scene. So we're going to do it, you know what, we're going to actually just copy and paste this because we're going to do the same exact thing. So you might be asking, how do you get an event, how do you get an action event with the scene? Because well, does clicking on the scene make an action event? No, of course not. Clicking on the scene doesn't make an action event. If I can click here, no, nothing's going to happen. But if I press on this button, actually here, uh, just so you guys can see more clearly, let's change this part to system.out.printline scene action event. 
and then uh, what am I missing here? Do I have an extra one of those? Yep. So if we look at this now, and if we press the button, we see something really weird happen. Not only did our buttons action event handler go off because we can see that the scene turned blue, but also in the console we got scene action event. Well, how does that work? What did we do to make an action event happen in the scene? Well, we didn't directly make an action event happen with the scene, but there's this sort of idea of a large path that an event takes when you do it. So when we, f if if here's our window, right? And on the outside we have the stage, and then we have the little s for the scene, and then we have, uh, we'll put a G for the group, and then we have a B for the button. What's actually going to happen is, let's say here's our button, when we click on it, that mark is supposed to represent a click, when we click on that, what actually happens is, first, th there's pretty much a process. First thing, it says, okay, what was just clicked? Well, this button was just clicked, so let's remember, keep this button in focus. This button is what's called the target. Then, what we're going to do is, we're going to say, okay, how are we going to, we know that the button was clicked, we need to get the event that was created by the button being clicked from the stage, which is where it starts, all the way down to the button. So it's going to say, okay, we're going to send it to the stage, then the scene, then the group, then the, then the button. Okay, so it's going to take this path down the hierarchy into the button. If we have an event handler, it's going to do whatever our, it's going to handle the event. So we can see that since our event, event handler tells it to make the scene blue, when we press it, it makes the scene blue. Also, then what happens is after the event happens, the event isn't gone itself. The event object is still there. So what it does is it travels again up and out. So then it says, okay, now we need to get this button out of here. So it's going to travel back up. It's going to go back through the button to the group, to the scene, to the stage. And here what's going to happen is when it goes back through the scene, it's still an action event. And here our scene is saying when it receives the event it's saying hey wait I have an event handler also for the type of action events so do whatever I have as well so then it'll say scene action event and one way and this is something I doubt you'll see in any other tutorials because I know when I was learning this no one really explained it to me but if we go over here and we say here we're gonna make two statements inside this so we're gonna say um, what's it called we're gonna say e dot consumer let's put this in a normal method format so hold on one second we're gonna put these brackets and then we're gonna say here e dot consume and what this consume method does is it basically says okay this event is done stop sending it throughout the process it's done so now what happens if we run this and we press it the scene becomes blue but it no longer says scene action event and the reason for that is because what's happening is it's going down and it's getting to the button the buttons handling it but then the buttons consuming it and it doesn't actually delete it it marks it as consumed so that nothing else can handle it really but the important thing to know is it doesn't get handled by anything else so I can't guarantee that last part of the tutorial will come in use for you because more times than not you may not be having like action event handlers for anything except a button but I have personally had one or two times where I needed to consume my event or else it was getting messed up so I hope you guys get some use out of that and otherwise I hope you have understood the basics of event handling we'll definitely be doing a lot more with it in the future we'll be doing mouse event and key events and window events I've done a lot of window event stuff myself so pretty knowledgeable on that front um, but anyway yeah so hope you guys learned something and I will see you guys in the next episode